Welcome to this amazing service in an oratory that's named after one of the main characters today who was there witnessing for Jesus as he rose from the dead. Today in our community, this is uh, it's a key point. Like every step in our way, it's a starting point. It's a, a time to take stock and journey onwards. So welcome to everybody who's joining us on Zoom. I'm going to have to get a bit closer to see who we all are. Lady, good morning. Brother David. And is that Mother Diana? It is. <laughs> Fantastic. Spread about the globe in a dispersed community. We're here to ordain jewels to the Major Order of Deacon and also to elevate Brother David to the, the order of doorkeeper. It's a, a task that he has been undertaking for our community ever since the four of us started thinking about how we were going to be as a community. And so today we're going to give him the ritual honour of the task that he's already been doing. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And I see Zoe is also here as well. Welcome to you. In the name of Christ, I need to put my reading glasses on. In the name of Oops. that's better. Name of God, Christ the Comforter and the Holy Spirit. May God purify me that I may worthily perform their service. In the strength of the Christ do I repel all evil from this God's holy altar and sanctuary, and from this God's house wherein we worship. And I pray that our heavenly parent will send their holy angel to build for us a spiritual temple through which God's strength and blessing may be poured forth upon all people. Through Christ. Amen. Beloved, here present, now let us lay the foundation of our temple. Christ is our foundation and our chief cornerstone. We are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together, groweth unto a holy temple in the Christ, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Except Christ build the house, their labour is but lost that build it. The foundation of God standeth sure, Having this seal, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Christ is our foundation and our chief cornerstone. O God, thou hast created us to be immortal and made us to be an image of thine own eternity. 
Yet often we forget the glory of our heritage and wander from the path which leads to righteousness. But thou, O God, hast made us for thyself, and our hearts are ever restless till they find their rest in thee. Look with the eyes of thy love upon our manifold imperfections and pardon all our shortcomings, that we may be filled with the brightness of the everlasting light and become the unspotted mirror of thy power and the image of thy goodness through Christ. Amen. God the parent, God the Christ, and God the Holy Ghost, bless, preserve, and sanctify you. The Lord in his loving kindness look down upon you and be gracious unto you. God absolve your sins and grant you the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With praise and with prayer shall our temple be built. To God alone be the glory. We'll just end with the candles. <laughs> Christ be with you. With thy spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the undivided unity, eternal, immortal, invisible, to whom be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, how excellent is thy name in all the world. Glory be to the parent and to the Christ and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the undivided unity, eternal, immortal, invisible, to whom be honour and glory forever and ever. Amen. Brother David.
if you were here in person, I'd be asking you to step forward to be ordained to the office of doorkeeper. But I look up and you're right in front of me. So that's wonderful. And right now I'm accepting a virtual candle from your hands. Thank you. We're having a we're having a candle moment behind, and I hope everyone can see me and hear me with the rustling. But it was the duty of the doorkeeper in olden times to ring the church bells, to open the church at the appointed times to the faithful, but to keep it ever closed to unbelievers, to open the book for the preacher and to guard with diligence the church furniture, lest any should be lost or malfunctioning. In our time, these functions no longer appertain to the order of doorkeeper, but rather do we treat them as symbolic and invest them with a moral significance. It will thus be your duty as doorkeeper to keep the keys of your heart, to open the heart at all times for the expression of that which is noble and good, but sternly to keep it closed against evil and unworthy suggestions. As it's your duty to keep your own heart, so should you also seek to predispose the hearts of others to things which are beautiful and in persuasive language to set forth to them the attractiveness of noble ideals. Thus may you, in these days, discharge the duties of service which marked the work of our earlier brethren. In this degree, you learn control of the emotions and passions. As before, you learn to master the crude instincts of the physical body. There are those who have thought of emotion as necessarily evil and have taught others to uproot it from the nature, not for you is to think thus. God has given us the power to feel emotion and it too is a power which can become mighty in God's service. At whatever stage a person's emotions may be, they represent the working of the divine power within and should not be suppressed but raised and consecrated to the service of God. If through carelessness or selfishness, the emotions have been allowed to become self-centered, it's our duty not to kill them out, but to purify and raise them, to substitute for devotion to our own pleasure, devotion to God and all our humankind, to put aside as far as may be, affection for self, for the affection that gives, caring nothing for any return, not to ask love, but to give love. Hence, it's your task as a doorkeeper to train your emotions, laying them as a gift on Christ's holy altar, that they too may be used in Christ's service. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, who art ever ready to receive and to strengthen the earnest aspirations of thy children, look down in thy love upon this thy servant, who desires to become worthy to serve thee as a doorkeeper in this thy holy church. Sanctify them, O Christ, with thy heavenly grace, 
that growing continually in virtue, they may rightly practice the duties of their office and so be found acceptable in thy sight. O oh, thou great King of love, to whom be glory forever and ever. In the name of the Christ, I admit thee to the order of doorkeeper. I'm going to give you a bell. And a key. You could find yourself a significant bell and a key and place them in your safe space. That would be wonderful. Like as them that bear the key, throw open the church for the use of all. So shall thou throw open the doors of thy heart for the service of all. And as they who ring the bell summon people to divine worship, so by the force of good example shall thou also summon people to the service of God. If you were here, you would be very busy unlocking the door of the oratory and ringing the bell. You could do that in your mind and in your heart and we'll imagine it. <laughs> the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Christ, and the Comforter come down upon you so that you may rightly fulfill that which today you have undertaken. Bless you, brother. We have light. Glory be to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O God, heavenly monarch, God, the almighty parent, O Christ, alone born of God, O Christ, indwelling light, offspring of the heavenly parent, whose wisdom mightily and sweetly ordereth all things. Pour forth thy love, thou whose strength upholdeth and sustaineth all creation. Receive our prayer, thou whose beauty shineth through the whole universe. Unveil thy glory, for thou only art holy, thou only art the unifier. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of the eternal God. Amen. Christ be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ. Amen. O God of love, we praise thee, we bless thee, with all our hearts do we thank thee and magnify thy name, 
for this most holy and wondrous festival of Easter. For in the glorious victory, which in it is commemorated and symbolized, thou hast given us the sure and certain witness that good shall finally triumph over ill, and that death is but a gateway to the ineffable splendor of eternal life in thee. O never setting son of righteousness, who liveth and reignest God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of Christ is made holy and governed. Do thou pour forth the sanctifying grace into the hearts of this thy servant, who is about to be numbered among the deacons of thy church, that with pure heart and open mind, she may faithfully receive the gift of the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Teach us, O God, to see thy life in all the peoples of thine earth, and so guide the nations into the understanding of thy laws, <clears throat> that peace and goodwill may reign upon earth through Christ. Amen. Today, we pray for peace in our world and in our hearts. We pray for support and safety on this Transgender Visibility Day. We pray that allies may step out in support for those, our trans siblings, who may not feel confident to be visible. Through Christ, we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Epistle. The epistle is taken from the fourth chapter of the epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians, beginning at the seventh verse. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which is every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Here endeth the epistle. It's
Brother David, would you like, in your capacity as doorkeeper, to introduce Jules? I introduce Jules to you, Mother, to be ordained into the order of deacon. Brother David, do you know that she is worthy of this? I ordination? do. I do. I love that surety. The words actually say, as far as human frailty allows me to judge, <laughs> I do know and attest. But our doorkeeper says, I do, I do. Fantastic. Welcome, Jules. Thanks be to God. I just want to say, if you haven't seen this candle before, Jules made it at the beginning of her journey. And I think it's long enough to take her into priesthood and beyond, don't you? So, dearly beloved friends, Jules, our subdeacon here before you is presented for the order of the diaconate to be irrevocably set forward and set apart for the service of Christ by the gift of God's most Holy Spirit. Mindful of the sacred trust reposed in us, we've sought to ensure that only such may be profitable to Christ's holy church may be thus presented. Yet for further precaution, it's seemly that we should inquire of the community if any know of cause or just impediment why Jules should not be admitted to the exercise of the deacon's office. If then any of you know aught against Jules in the name of God, and for the benefit of God's church, let them boldly come forward and speak. Howbeit, let them also be mindful of their own estate. Seems they approve. Thank you. <laughs> Dearly beloved Jules, who are now about to be raised to the order of deacon, do you endeavour to receive it worthily and blamelessly, to fulfil its duties when you have received it? It appertains to the deacon to minister at the altar, to read or intone the gospel, to preach, and in the absence of the priest to baptize. Wherefore, dearly beloved, as now you're charged to minister to the flock of Christ, be you raised above all unworthy propensities which war against the soul. Be seemly, courteous in demeanor, and full of noble desires and love for God and God's people, as befits the ministers of Christ and stewards charged to dispense the mysteries of God. And as you now have a share in offering and dispensing the body and blood of Christ, as Holy Writ has it, be ye clean, that ye shall bear the vessels of the Lord. Be it your care to set forth to others by living deeds the gospel 
your lips will proclaim to them that of you it may be said how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of them that bring good tidings that publish peace. Julie Pio Sharon Farah, will you thus strive to use worthily the powers entrusted to you? I will. The Lord keep you in all these things, well beloved, and strengthen you in all goodness. Amen. Let us pray, dearest people, friends, congregation, that almighty God, in their great loving kindness and watchful care over the church, may bestow a plentiful grace upon this subdeacon now about to be raised to the order of the diaconate. God the Father, seen of none, God the co-eternal Son, God the Spirit, with them one, hear us, Holy Trinity. God, eternal, mighty King, unto thee our love we bring, through the world thy praises ring. We are thine, O Trinity. Christ, the Lord of life and light, ruler of the starry height, fount of glory infinite, thee we worship must. Mighty Lord, we hail thee here, recognize thy presence, dear, feel and know that thou art near, keeping thus thy promise. Through thy face we cannot see, as of old in Galilee, strong in faith we worship thee, ever-present Master. From our fathers we have heard of the gift thy hands conferred, we have proved thy holy word, be that gift that pour it. Though thy form from earth hath gone, thine apostles handed on, sacramental benison, be that blessing with us. We this power would now convey. Strengthen thou our hands, we pray. For the might through us today. Hear us, holy master. Monarch at thy feet we kneel, for thy servants 
fill their hearts with holy zeal in thy service, Master. Thou of holy church, the head, mystic power upon them shed, by thy love may they be led, hear us, holy master. Link in mystic bond with thee, these thy deacons may they be, from the world of self set free. By thy power, O Master, may she stand before thy face, filled with love and heavenly grace. Grant her with thy saints a place near thee, Lord and Master. We beseech thee, hear our prayer. Bless thy servant prostrate here. Hold her in thy loving care. Hear us, holy Trinity. Hear thy servant as they pray. Help thy chosen one today. Bless and hallow them for a Hear us, holy Trinity. Pour thy loving kindness great on this chosen candidate. Bless them, hallow, consecrate. Hear us, holy Trinity. God the Father, seen of none, God the co-eternal Son, God the Spirit with them one, we are thine, O Trinity. Lord Christ, the fountain of all goodness, who by the operation of the Holy Spirit has appointed diverse orders in thy church, and for its greater enrichment and perfecting, does pour down the gifts abundantly upon the people. We pray to God to open jewels in thy heavenly grace. Open her heart and mind as she is a servant who is about to be numbered among the deacons of thy church, that through them thy power may abundantly flow for the service of thy people. For our part as people lacking the divine insight and ignorant of the supreme judgment, we've inquired into their lives to the best of our ability. But what to us is unknown cannot escape thee, O God, nor are hidden things concealed from thee. Thou penetrate all secrets. Thou, God, art the searcher of hearts. Thou wilt test her life. 
by thy heavenly judgment, wherein thou dost ever prevail. Wherefore we pray thee, O Lord and heavenly Master Christ, to hallow and strengthen with thy mighty blessing those who we now set apart, to the end that they may minister at thy holy altars and to the well-being of thy faithful people. Increase in them, O Lord, the gifts of thy Holy Spirit, that they may be strong and of a good courage, and surmounting doubt and imperfection, may purchase to themselves a good degree and a great boldness in the faith. O thou great ruler of the hearts of people, to whom be praise and adoration, from people and from the angel host. Amen. Come thou creator spirit blessed and in our souls take up thy rest come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made Great Paraclete, to thee we cry, O highest gift of God most high, O living fount, O fire, O love, and sweet anointing from above. Thou in thy sevenfold gift art known, the finger of God's hand we own, the promise of the parent thou, who dost the tongue with power endow. Kindle our senses from above and make our hearts so glow with love, with patience firm and virtue high, the weakness of our flesh apply. Far let us drive our tempting foe, and thine abiding peace bestow. So shall we not with thee for guide, turn from the path of life aside. O oh, may thy grace on us bestow the parent and the Christ to know and thee through endless times confess of both eternal spirit bless. For glory while the ages run, be to the parent and the son who gave us life the same to thee. O Holy Ghost, eternally. Receive the Holy Ghost for the office and work of a deacon in the Church of God.
O God, the Holy Ghost, who has deigned to descend upon these, the, this thy servant in spirit and in power. Strengthen them with thy sevenfold might for the faithful performance of this ministry. May that power ever flow forth in their actions and kindle their speech. May Jules be resolute and steadfast in the service of their community and the wider people. So that having always the witness of a good conscience, they may continue strong and stable in Christ. Pillars in the temple of our God. Thou who with the Father, the Creator God, the Christ, live and reign, God, throughout all ages of ages. Ages. Amen. Reverend Jules, take. It's the first time I said that. <laughs> really, really powerful. Take that white stole for the symbol. Thine office. Remembering that as for the service and love of people, thou dost exercise the power which now is in thee. So will it flow through thee in ever greater fullness and glory. The Lord clothes thee with the vesture of gladness and ever encompass thee with the dalmatic of justice and the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Take their authority to read the gospel in the church of God. For the living and the dead, in the name of God, parent, the Christ, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. O Christ, the Lord of love, who by the heavenly and earthly service of angels, which thou orderest, dost shed over all the elements the efficacy of thy will. Pour out on this thy servant of the fullness of thy blessing, that in the fellowship of those glorious angels, she may minister worthily at thy holy altars, and being endowed with heavenly virtue and grace, they may ever be watchful and zealous in thy service of thy church. Thou who reignest for ever and ever. Amen.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ. Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by people came death, by Jesus came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so, in Jesus the Christ shall all be made alive. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O God, who by the hand of thy Sarah did cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal from thine altar. And in thy loving kindness, so purify me that I may worthily proclaim thy holy gospel through Christ. Amen. May Christ be in thy heart and on thy lips, that through thy heart the love of God may shine forth, and through thy lips God's power be made manifest. Amen. Christ be with you, with thy spirit and spirit. Holy Gospel for Easter is taken from the 28th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O God. As it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene, and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake and an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And as the angel said unto the women, fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus who was crucified. Why seek ye the living amongst the dead? He is not here, he has risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and took him by the feet and worshipped him. The Holy Gospel is taken 
from the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the third verse. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which he has lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbours, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons who need no repentance. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Creator and of the Christ and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we're in a chapel that is dedicated and squeaky and named after Mary Magdalene. The tower. So today it is probably one of the most fitting days of the year to have ordained Jules as its deacon. Now Mary Magdalene is such a present and spiritually potent character in the New Testament. So powerful that the powers that be within the church over generations tried their very hardest to rubbish her, extinguish her. And you know, what's the word that we use now for cancel, yeah, cancel her? So this cancel culture that we have now, um, you know, we, we can see evidence of it going back years. But what an extraordinary woman. The first person to recognize the risen Christ. The first person to have been given the gospel message of the resurrection to spread abroad. There are so many different ways that Mary Magdalene has been recognized in other aspects of spiritual traditions. The Gnostic tradition in particular has very fiercely reclaimed this apostle of the apostles. I don't know if uh, any of you know Epistus Sophia, but um, whenever it was written, second or fourth century, it's uh, a testament to her understanding of the mysteries that Jesus was said to have spent time after his resurrection teaching his apostles. The seven sins that the the uh, the seven devils that the the conventional church said that were sent out cast out of Mary Magdalene. 
Could there not have been the opening of her chakras? The opening to the full wisdom, the full teaching of the mysteries that Christ was here to tell us about. The mysteries that he covered for the general population by telling stories that related to their lives. So we celebrate today the women who were there at the beginning of the, resurrect, the resurrected gospel. The gospel that transcended everything that they had thought about. Mary Magdalene, the Magdala, the tower, also appears in some tarot readings where the tower is the starting point. Everything has to collapse before it can be rebuilt. And on this Easter day, I would like you if you're able to find our sister church um, in Australia, where, where Mother Vicky has posted some ideas about renewal and modernizing the liberal Catholic church for our times. I can send out the document that Bishop Harry sent to me and as we gather as a dispersed community, we must surely look at our relevance, our work in our communities, what we do, what we stand for. Because to be purely altar priests is very beautiful and it spreads a radiance and a power that we as human beings can't do ourselves, but it's our work out there that brings the love of Christ and the message and the power of resurrection that Mary Magdalene saw with her own eyes that day. Many blessings and thank you for being here. Now to eternal God, the creator, God the Christ and God the Holy Ghost, three persons in one God, be ascribed as is most justly due. All honour, might, majesty, power and dominion, now henceforth and forevermore. Amen. We say our act of faith. We believe that God is love and power and truth and light, that perfect justice rules the world, that all God's children shall one day reach God's feet, however far they stray. We hold the parenthood of God, the unity of all creation. We know that we do serve God best when best we serve others. So shall God's blessing rest on us and peace forevermore. That was an angel boy. <laughs>
We adore thee, O God, who art the source of all life and goodness. And with true and thankful hearts, we offer unto thee this token of thine own life-giving gifts, bestowed upon us, thou who art the giver of all. According to immemorial custom, we now mix water with this wine, praying that we may evermore abide in Christ and Christ in us. We offer unto thee, O God, this chalice with joy and gladness. May the worship which we offer ascend before thy divine majesty as a sacrifice pure and acceptable in thy sight. Through Christ. Amen. That's fine. As this incense rises before thee, O God, so let our prayer be set forth in thy sight. Let thy holy angels encompass thy people and breathe forth upon them the spirit of thy blessing. God, we kindle with us the fire of divine love and the flame of everlasting charity. Glory be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty. May God receive the sacrifice at thy hands and sanctify our lives in God's service. Let us pray. We lay before thee, O God, these thy creatures of bread and wine in token of our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. For here we offer and present unto thee ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a holy and continual sacrifice unto thee. May our strength be spent in thy service and our love poured forth upon thy people. Thou who livest for ever and ever. Amen. Christ be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto God. It is right to give God's. That we should in all time and in all places. Give thanks unto thee. O unity. 
our holy parent, almighty everlasting God. But chiefly, we're bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who by his mystic death and rising again hath given unto us the promise of eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with thrones, dominations, dominions, virtues, powers, with cherubim and seraphim, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, ever praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O God most high. Blessed is the one that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O oh God, these are oblations have served as tokens and channels of our love and devotion towards thee. But now we pray thee to receive. To purify. And hallow them as earthly channels of thy wondrous power. We desire to offer this holy sacrifice especially for thy holy Catholic Church, for our sovereign King Charles, and all that are put in authority under him, for myself, your bishop, for all our clergy and faithful, for those here present, and for all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We bring those from our hearts to you in prayer now. And likewise, do we offer it for all those thy children whom it has pleased thee to deliver from the burden of the flesh, especially for those who we remember now. Knowing that not a sparrow falls without God being aware. that freed from earthly toil and care, they may enjoy the felicity of thy presence, evermore praising thee in word and deed, O God, everlasting, living, and true. Wherefore, O holy unity, almighty, everlasting God, we pray thee to look down on and accept as a channel these offerings, and with thy holy spirit and word, to bless, approve, and ratify them for they so that they may become for us Christ's most precious body and blood. Through the day before Christ suffered, they took bread into their holy and venerable hands, and with their eyes lifted up to heaven to thee, God their almighty parent giving thanks to thee, Christ blessed, break and gave it to their disciples, saying, Take and eat ye all of this, for this is my body. In like manner, after Christ had supped, taking also this noble chalice into their holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to thee, Christ blessed it, and gave it to their disciples, saying, Take and drink ye all of this, for this is my blood, as oft as you should do these things. You shall do them in remembrance of me. He 
we adore, O oh, hidden splendor, thee, who in thy sacrament dost deign to be. We worship thee beneath this earthly veil, and hear thy presence we devoutly hail. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold them, monarch of the angel. Oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us adore. Then Christ the Word. Yea, Christ, we greet thee. Throned on thine altar, ever to thee be highest glory given. Word of creation, splendor everlasting, oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us adore them. Christ the Word. Wherefore, O Heavenly Parent, we, thy humble servants, bearing in mind the ineffable sacrifice of Christ, do offer unto thee this most precious gift which thou hast bestowed upon us in token of our love and of the perfect devotion and sacrifice of our minds and hearts to thee. And we pray that thou wouldst command thy holy angel to bear our oblation to thine altar on high, there to be offered by them who as the eternal high priest forever offers themselves as the eternal sacrifice. And we do pray for thy servant who ministers at this altar, that meekly celebrating the mysteries of the most holy, body and blood of Christ. They may be filled with thy mighty power and blessing. Likewise, we pray thee to sanctify thy people here present with these thy heavenly gifts, and through these mysteries do thou hallow, quicken and bless them, that both in their hearts and in their lives they may show forth thy praise and glorify thy holy name. All these things do we ask, O God, in the name and through the mediation of thy most blessed Christ. For we acknowledge and confess with our hearts and lips that by them were all things made, yea, all things both in heaven and earth. With them as this indwelling life do all things exist, and in them as the transcendent glory all things live and move and have their being. To whom with thee, O mighty God, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be ascribed to all honour and glory throughout the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray. Loving creator who is within us, we celebrate your many names. Your wisdom come, 
your will be done unfolding from the depths within us. Each day you give us all that we need. You remind us of our limits and we let go. You support us in our power and we act with courage. For you are the dwelling place within us, the empowerment around us and the celebration among us, now and forevermore. Amen. Here do we give unto thee, O Christ, most high praise and hearty thanks for the wonder you declared in the Holy Lady Mary, Mary Magdalene, Padre Pio, and in all thy glorious saints from the beginning of the world, who have been the choice vessels of thy grace and a shining light unto many generations. And we join with them in worship before thy great white throne whence flow all love and light and blessing through all the worlds which thou hast made. O Christ, offspring of God, who shows thyself this day upon a thousand altars and yet art one and indivisible, in token of thy great sacrifice we break this, thy body, Praying that by this action ordained from of old, thy strength, thy peace, and thy blessing, which thou dost give us in this holy sacrament, may be spread abroad upon thy world. And as thou, O Christ, was made known to thy di disciples in the breaking of bread, so may thy many children know themselves to be one in thee, even as thou art one with God. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace of Christ be always with you. And with thy spirit. O thou who in this adorable sacrament has left us a living memorial and pledge of thy marvellous love for us all, and dost therein graciously draw us into wondrous and mystic communion with thee, grant us so to receive the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood, that our souls may be lifted into the immensity of thy love, and that being filled with an high endeavour, we may ever be mindful of thine indwelling presence, and breathe forth the fragrance of a holy life. Is that have their own supplies of post wafer? bit of bread, some wine or juice, partake in this meal now and know that the Spirit of God is within that meal. The body of our Lord Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood of our Lord Christ keep you in eternal life.
Under the veil of earthly things, now have we communion with Jesus Christ. Soon with open face shall we behold them and rejoicing in their glory be made like unto them. Then shall all true disciples be brought by them with exceeding joy before the presence of their heavenly parents' glory. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be unto our God for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. We who have been refreshed with thy heavenly gifts do pray thee, O God, that thy grace may be so grafted inwardly in our hearts that it may continually be made manifest in our lives. Through Christ, amen. Christ be with you. And with thy spirit. Eat Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Christ Jesus our Lord. The blessing of God, the Almighty, the Creator, the Christ, 
and the Holy Ghost to be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. May the Holy Ones, whose pupils we aspire to become, show us the light we seek and give us the strong aid of their compassion and their wisdom. There's a peace that passes understanding. It abides in the hearts of those who live in eternal. There's a power that makes all things new. It lives and moves in those who see the self as one. May that peace brood over you, that power uplift you till you come where the one initiator is invoked. Till you see God's star shine forth.